Hello everyone and good morning from the Norwegian Encore cruise ship. I go by the legend, joined by my wonderful girlfriend Molly. Hi. In this video here, we're gonna show you all around the Norwegian Encore. Everything there is to do, all the activities and attractions, the food, the restaurants, the bars, everything there is to do on this very, very big cruise ship. Starting here, it was a pretty busy pool deck. Mm -hmm. Now we're filming this section on a sea day, our last sea day on the ship. And uh, every every lounge chair was really taken by about 10.30 in the morning. So if you do want to get that spot in the sun, we're on a very full cruise, definitely try and get there early. There are two pools on the pool deck, the one close to us and the one right next to the kids' splash area. Well, that is going to be an all-ages pool. The one closer to the Jumbotron over there, that is an adults-only pool. Um, both pools seem somewhat busy. Yeah. Um, obviously, the adult one will be more popular because they, they want to have drinks in peace. Now, the, they do the, a lot of different things on the pool deck area. There'll be music out here. There'll be games out here. There'll be movies out here in the evening. Uh, during our cruise, there were three different deck parties. A uh, Latin one, a blue one. And an 80s party. And uh, the 80s party was really cool. They put like music videos on the Jumbotron. And there are four hot tubs out here as well. You can see them over here. And those four are gonna be the only hot tubs on the entire ship if you don't want to spend extra money. So and those have been packed. Yes. But it's a very, very pretty ship. It's a big ship. And let's go check out all of it. A very interesting attraction they have here is go-karts on the top deck at the Encore Speedway. Now this is an upcharge attraction where it does cost $15 per person to do. And they go surprisingly very slow. Um, right now it is double carts. Sometimes they do double carts, sometimes they do single carts. Uh, the double carts allow for smaller kids to ride. Um, there's a nice kind of viewing platform up here as well. And some sort of game where you pick up this blaster like Molly has and you could shoot the cars to give them a boost. Which is, um, that that's kind of gives you a, a Mario Kart element to the, the go-kart track. Don't know if it actually works. Oh, that was good. Oh, I had to reload. <laughs> and there we go. That's the speedway. Let's talk about the two main water slides here at Mothership. You see somebody over there getting loaded into what's called the Ocean Loops, which is a drop pod water slide that hangs off the side of the ship. It is uh, pretty frightening. You loop twice, I think. Yeah, over the side of the water. And you have to like, cross your arms, and then they'll close the big glass coffin, and then you will drop. You can see them closing the coffin now. And then I'll count you down and send you flying. Uh, not my favorite experience. Uh, there they go. It's kind of mesmerizing to watch. It looked like she barely made it over. Yep. And then the other water slide, well, that, that was much more family friendly. That is the Aqua Racer a tube slide. That one I would do. Yep. And uh, they do run different hours. So, you know, you look at the time guide because it'll tell you when each water slide is open. They don't operate at the same hours. Located on the top deck, all the way in the back of the ship, is the Laser Tag Arena. It's a really well-themed Laser Tag it Arena. Is. Like, this it's looks crazy. fantastic. Um, now, to play Laser Tag, unfortunately, it is not included with the cost of your cruise. This is an upcharge experience. It does cost $10 to do. So I'm, I'm probably not gonna do this on the cruise. I don't like spending that much money extra once I'm already on a ship. But uh, even if you're not gonna do Laser Tag, it's worth coming back here, because they do keep it open for you to wander around and see the, the crazy snake. themed elements. It'll probably be pretty fun in the evening. Yeah. But it's gotta be the right weather for it too. We are currently in deck six in the middle of the ship, which is home to the atrium on board, the Encore. And the atrium is really a hub of activity. Yes. Today we're on sea day and they got pretty much activities going from about nine in the morning till 11 p.m. I love how they have a family game show every single day on our sailing around 5 p.m. Yep. And then more of an adult one around eight. And those chairs, I like those chairs. Those are the ones that I recommend you sitting. All sorts of stuff in here. We just watched cupcake demonstration where they were decorating cupcakes. There's been trivia, game shows, music, movies. Had like four drinks and watched Shrek the other day. It was great. Um, other stuff in the atrium area. You'll find your shore excursions desk, guest services, onboard credit desk, cruise next, which port shopping guide and restaurant reservations. Uh, they do really good deals with their cruise next area. I actually booked a cruise for like next week while I'm, I was on board this one, so I'll be on the Norwegian Pearl very, very soon. There is a full service Starbucks area that actually kind of looks like a real Starbucks. That's rather impressive. Yes, they had quite the line earlier. Which makes sense. That, that checks out. And it wouldn't be an atrium without an atrium bar. Uh, I like the, the chandelier decoration on the atrium bar. Yes. There's also an internet cafe and help desk. And over there, way over there, that is the perspective photo studio where you get fancy pictures taken. 
lots of stuff going on here from fun to uh, essentials on the cruise here in the evening. Located on deck eight, you'll find the Cavern Club, which is a famous club in Liverpool where the Beatles were discovered. Uh, Molly's gonna be so kind of open some of these doors. That the, this part will not be open at the moment. One thing that's really cool on the walls coming in, you'll see all the famous bands that have played at the Cavern Club. And this venue is used for mostly used for live music. I believe it's been karaoke a little bit as well. Um, there's a normal cruise ship band that plays in here and also a Beatles cover band. Really good. Yeah, they played in here two nights. There was like an earlier Beatles set and they do the full tribute act thing where they dress and, and do their hair just the, like the Beatles do. The later years was so popular. So get here early, they do fill up. Molly, right now we're at something I really, really like here on the Norwegian Encore, and that is what's known as the waterfront. On deck eight, there's a wraparound deck that goes about three quarters of the way around yeah, the back of the ship. The and it's it's just wonderful. There's outdoor bars, there's binoculars to view things. Seats. Uh, yeah, it's uh, comfy couches. You get any of the specialty restaurants on deck eight, you can eat outside, except for Food Republic. Yes. There are two outdoor bars on the promenade area. One is this one right outside of the Cavern Club. Ooh. Yep, this is uh, good because this one has a TV, so the sports will be on out here. We are on an NFL football Saturday on this cruise, so I definitely want to watch some of the games starting at four o'clock. Don't really need to watch ski jumping right now, but also great breeze out here. Here are some of the binoculars. They're based all around the waterfront area. Free to use. Great for whale watching. Yeah, if I, you're in Alaska. Or uh, looking at some of the ports. Yeah, we looked at uh, the roller coaster in, in Jamaica. Jamaica. Yep. Here you can see some of the comfy couches. And uh, on a sea day, they're very popular. A lot of people just relaxing out here, enjoying the peacefulness. It's beautiful reading books, weather. Chatting. The aft section of the waterfront is very, very neat. You get the wonderful aft views if you look dead ahead. I love coming out here on the sea days. But you don't kind of look into the sea with this one. You got kind of the ducktail. Yeah. Section, so you just kind of look down at that. But these views are pretty solid. On the port side of the waterfront, you'll find this uh, glass enclosed structure. That is a smoking section. Uh, I've heard smokers refer to this as smoking jail. Yes. It is. Uh, there's not too many places you could smoke on this cruise ship, and this is one of them. We are now at the other bar on the waterfront. And this one's very interesting. It's called the Sail and Sustain Bar. Mm -hmm. It focuses on, uh, there's always a drink of the day, which is a zero waste cocktails. Today's a sustainable spritz using herb stem and viewed organic vodka. And that drink will change out every single day. They're always interesting too. Yeah. On deck six, right in the middle of the ship, you'll find the social, which is two main reasons. It is a nightclub in the later evenings. And in the earlier evenings, it is the comedy club. Uh, a couple things, the comedy club, you do need to make reservations and they go very quickly. So that should be, if you want to see the comedian, go a, do it as soon as you get on the ship. They do have a standby line. Of course, it's not guaranteed, but on our sailing, the standby line, at least for the eight o'clock shows. Got in every time. Got in every time. And the nightclub's cool. There's a lot of tech in there. They do a uh, silent disco two nights of the cruise oh, on awesome. our five night. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been pretty cool. Here on deck seven, all the way in the front of the ship, you'll find the Encore Theater, which is the main show theater on board the ship. We're on a five night cruise, and in the theater, they'll use it for bingo, like the, getting ready to go right now. Mm -hmm. And then on night one, there was comedians in here, as well as a magician. On night two, there was, I don't remember, the, the Beatles? The Beatles. The Beatles were in here instead of in the Cavern Club. Mm -hmm. Night three, they did their big production show called Choir of Man, which they're also gonna do tonight. We haven't seen it yet, but that is what this set is here. Um, it, it, it's supposed to, I've heard very good things about it, so I'm very excited to see that later tonight. And last night was a magician. On deck seven in the atrium area is another one of my favorite spots on board, their Norwegian Encore, and that is the local bar and grill. Now this is a 24 hour day food restaurant. They'll serve breakfast in the mornings, an expanded menu at lunch and dinner time, and then late night snacks that are really delicious. So we are gonna sit down right here. Then we can watch whatever game show is up next and eat our lunch. Let's take a look at the menu they serve for lunch. It does start off with the cocktails, as there is a bar over there that runs some very, very long hours. It's one of the longest hours on the ship. If you do want to see any of these in detail, feel free to pause the video. Mostly, you know, take a look at the food menu. And here we go. 
starters, soup of the day, beef chili, comp salad, Caesar salad, my personal favorite, the half dozen chicken wings, spinach and artichoke dip, which is very good, pretzel bites with beer cheese fondue, grilled sausage sliders, loaded nachos. Some of your sandwiches include a Reuben, a chicken salad sandwich, uh, fish and chips, cheeseburger, Wrangler burger, blue cheeseburger, a pub hot dog, and a Coney dog. Uh, for dinner, they will also always do a blue plate special of the day. I think, uh, I think it's chicken parmesan tonight. And there's your desserts and entrees. I really like the uh, brownie raspberry cheesecake. It's delicious. Our food is served. It came out pretty All quick. Right, I got six right, buffalo right, wings. Right, we got the spinach and artichoke right, chip right, and the right, loaded right, nachos. Right, now, we got our food probably within about 20 minutes or so. Um, sometimes I've gotten it within 10. But some days it took a full hour when I came later in the evening. Right, Molly also got a chili cheese dog. Right next to the local, there's also a small arcade. You got a pool table. Penny press machine. You don't see much on cruise ships. No, and it's really loud. And I think Molly just got a penny. Oh yeah, look at that, they did. <laughs> Lane Master Bowling, Papa Shop Basketball. We can all get five tickets, Molly. Your lucky day. Five whole tickets. I don't need the tickets. currently in the middle of deck eight at the sugarcane mojito bar drinking a couple of cocktails i've got one with a umbrella in it now the mojito bar has six different variations on the mojito along with a couple other tropical drinks um, my personal favorite thing to drink in this bar is the saturn landing which is their take on a typical saturn which is a gin based tiki bar drink and molly you are drinking the coconut mojito mm -hmm. now a lot of the drinks in here do come pre-batched as this does good busy it's a little annoying but it doesn't make sense Located on deck six, right in the middle of the ship, you'll find Coco's, which is gonna be upcharged chocolates and ice cream and baked goods. They look delicious. Yeah, they got a, a nice selection of bonbons. Those would all be about $2 each. Then some very, very fancy looking pastries. The pastries all run about $4 each. There's specialty shakes, hot chocolate, and ice cream in here as well. But these will all be an upcharge. Look at the, uh, the glasses, the shakes come in. They're like big, crazy, two-some-like shakes. Like that. These shakes are pretty crazy. Good morning. And while if you're like me, you probably don't want to spend extra money on food on a cruise ship, it's worth coming over to the Coco's area because really cool chocolate sculpture. And, and then... Chocolate fountain. Yeah, they have a mesmerizing chocolate fountain. White chocolate, milk chocolate, dark chocolate. Now, this is not like a chocolate fountain that you would find at the Golden Corral. This is really just for decoration, but it is mesmerizing. It's currently dinner time, and tonight we are dining on deck seven in the back of the ship at the Manhattan Room, which is the biggest main dining room on the cruise ship. Uh, really cool. We're going, I guess, into the center here where it goes two levels. A very, very pretty main dining room. All right, let's take a look at the menu for tonight. Starting off with the appetizers. Now some of these will change out. Some of them are here every single night. Coconut shrimp, Italian beef meatballs, avocado hummus, bruschetta, smoked mozzarella ravioli and a lobster cream sauce, chicken and matzo ball soup, cream of asparagus, French onion, baked brie salad, Caesar salad, mixed garden salad. Now these classic entrees, those will be there every single night of your cruise in the main dining room. Going on to today's featured entrees, sauteed chimichurri beef, that is that is definitely where I am gonna go. Pecan crusted turkey medallions, a tilapia, a paella, a spaghetti, and a lamb shank. So lots of good options. Hello. Like most main dining rooms, the first course is a bread course, but the breads do change out every single night. The appetizer course has arrived. I opted for the uh, the meatballs. My, I'm actually really interested in yours. You got an avocado hummus. Now, one thing I would say. If you are prone to motion sickness at all, I would probably say eat at the other two dining rooms. Here, all the way in the back of the ship, you do feel like, if you look at Molly's wine, any sort of vibration, any movement of the ship, you definitely feel it back here. 
The main course has arrived. I opted for the chimichurri beef, cooked medium rare. And Molly, I really hope you're hungry because I. Is it a, a lamb leg or lamb shank? Shank. Yeah. That, it is a, that is a healthy portion. It is. The dessert menu has arrived. And uh, man, there's a lot of good options today. Chocolate eclairs, Snickers pound cake, roasted golden delicious apple, warm banana souffle, Mexican chocolate cake, seasonal fruits, and ice cream. The dessert course has been served. Molly got some chocolate eclairs. And I am very excited for this. Banana souffle with like a whiskey sauce. That sounds fantastic. Also, dinner in the main dining room, super quick. Uh, from when we sat down to when we got our desserts, only about 45 minutes, so uh, kudos to them. Sometimes it takes a while, not here on the Encore. Located on deck six, right in the middle of the ship, you'll find the mix bar, which is essentially the pre-dinner, or at this point, pre-lunch bar for two of the main dining rooms. Uh, savor and taste. Now there's three main dining rooms on the ship. They will always serve the same menus with each other. Yes. Now these are the ones down here. These will be open for breakfast, lunch on sea days, and then dinner every night. And you can come over here and check out the menu. These are the smaller ones. The one on deck seven. Much is bigger. Much, much bigger. And these do fill up. Yes. We tried to eat around 7.15 one night. And they were full. And they were all full. Right now we are on deck eight at the Maltings Whiskey Bar. And in my opinion, this is the bar with the best cocktail selection on the entire ship. Uh, and it's not only whiskey-based cocktails, there's also some gin-based cocktails and some rum-based cocktails as well. It is home to my personal favorite drink on board the Norwegian Encore. And this is the Woodford Old Fashioned, made with uh, Woodford bourbon and maple syrup. Also some weird quirks too, where like Woodford, if you wanted to buy a shot of it, $23, not included in the beverage plan. You come to this bar, you ask for Woodford Old Fashioned, $14 included in the beverage plan. But they've got a lot of interesting cocktails, obviously a lot of whiskeys here as well. A couple things that's really fun about this bar, they've got some of the best seats on the, the ship. Really like those couches over there, those are fantastic. And attached to this lounge is the Humidor Cigar Lounge, where you can go and smoke a cigar. They will also sell you cigars. Right now I'm in the Galaxy Pavilion, which is a neat space. This is a virtual reality arcade. Now the pricing in here is a little bit interesting. You want to play one game, it is $8 per game. If you want to play an hour worth of stuff, as much as you can do in an hour, that is going to be $29. And if you want to play all day, that is $59. I'm going to walk around and take a look at some of the games. First of all, there is an escape room up here as well. I don't know if that's included in the packages or not, but uh, that's pretty cool. They have an escape room on board the ship. Uh, this is the only game that's kind of not in virtual reality, as it's um, soccer. So the, the goal is obviously to get the ball past the goaltender. And I believe it's normally very, very difficult. Well, that was not very exciting. All right, you've got some sort of a spaceship game over here called Exterminators, where you get a very large Gatling gun kind of thing. That is really cool, like a machine. Yeah. You got other uh, virtual reality rides here. This one you ride a virtual reality roller coaster or a uh, virtual reality hot rod race and one with dinosaurs. Some pretty cool looking arcade style racing games with some uh, movement. This might be the coolest looking one there is. A, uh, like an F1 racer game. I love the fans. Yeah. And you've got a hang gliding simulator. I've done those before, they're pretty neat. And also one where it looks like you have a machine gun and you ride it in an elevator. And Vertigo Walk the Plank is another one. This one you get harnessed up and you put on a virtual reality headset and then it looks like you're going to be walking across skyscrapers. Molly, you would not do well with this when you're no, falling. Like Robo War looks pretty neat. Uh, kind of a Terminator Mech Warrior game. And then over here is a couple of virtual reality mazes made by our buddies over at Triotech. Um, they didn't sell too many of these, but they're actually really, really neat. If you're going to only do one thing in this arcade, I recommend doing the VR maze. And last but certainly not least, you do have a Triotech 7D Dark Ride. So you sit in a moving chair, you get 3D glasses and a blaster, and you go on whatever movie they're showing right now. I'm currently in one of my favorite spots on board this ship. You love this spot? Yeah, this is the District Brew House. This is the craft beer bar. So they got about 20 beers on draft, another 30 in the bottles and cans. But they don't really do craft beer. Like, I'm drinking a really nice, fancy cocktail called the Guillotine, featuring a Woodford Reserve bourbon. 
And then this, on top of being the beer bar, it is also the piano bar in the evening. Mm -hmm. On our ceiling, the piano man was a gentleman named Bo. Very interesting, very unique piano guy. I, I've enjoyed listening to him. Uh, some more fun stuff I want to show you about this bar. They will have some sports on. And then uh, for entertainment, on top of the piano guy, you can come over here and play Tiny Beer Pong. Oh, that's not good. That was not good. But Tiny Beer Pong, like, it's pretty fun. I have never seen this before. Molly's lost most of the games, as you <laughs> might already be able to tell. I have won, though. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, also, some really, really comfy couches and chairs in here, including this guy right here, which might be my single favorite spot on board the ship. It is a recliner that you would look either out into the ocean or you could turn it around and then face whatever sports will be on in here. It's not the easiest thing to recline. But like, uh. <laughs> I, I was in this the other night and they kept bringing me a double DiSerono on the rocks. And I'm like, I just never want to leave. And you have like a... Yeah, your, your, uh, your yeah. beverage holder. I'm gonna be on a cruise in about a week when I'll be by myself doing a ton of work for In The Loop. And if they had a chair like this, I would never leave. I'd be there on my laptop, drinking beers, until I was no longer functional to yeah. edit the videos. But no, I, I love, love, love this place. Uh, favorite beers in here? It's tough, because they've got a lot of good ones. I really like 66, which is their own specialty. Which yeah. is nice that they have their own Yeah, they own specialty beer. It's the only place on the ship you can get it. Um, they've also got really good classic out, like uh, Cigar City High Life. A beat of purple haze. Uh, the barrel of monks wit beer is really also good. really good. So yeah, don't miss this, especially if you're a beer fan. On deck six, right by the savor and taste dining rooms, you'll find the art gallery on board. Now they do, a, as most cruise ships do, a champagne art auction. They also do guess the weight, and I love that they change these uh, pictures daily. Yeah, every single day, and normally they'll have a theme like it's all Peter Max stuff on this side. Uh, the other day it was all Thomas Kincaid stuff, so they had all the Disney Thomas Kincaid ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's kind of interesting to walk by every day and see what's out. And it's been busy too, like this has been busy like every day of the cruise. Everyone's There's been people in the office. office buying art. So uh, they're, they're definitely hitting their margins on this cruise. On deck 16 in the back of the ship is where you'll find the spa area on board. And there's actually a lot going on back there. This is where you'll find the ship's gym. There is also a spa and salon area. This also, if you want any treatments or massages, they will be all done in this area, including something I've never seen on a cruise ship before. They had IV treatments. Now this is something I saw when I was in Vegas, where they're essentially, if you're really hungover, they'll give you an IV and it'll be like a magic cure. Now it was $200, so I did not do it, but <laughs> cool that that was on the ship. The highlight of the spa area is the thermal suite, and this is really, really neat. This is something you buy a pass for. Now you can either buy a pass for the length of your cruise, or on a port day, you can buy a day pass. I did not get the pricing on it, but I believe it was pretty expensive. They have the really cool hot tub and jetted pool, lots of loungers, both the big stone heated loungers, as well as just kind of a, a nice lounger with some padding on it. There is a snow room in there, never seen that before on a cruise ship, a salt bath and a sauna. So overall, pretty nice spa and fitness area on the ship. Right across from the Cavern Club on Deck 8, you'll find the Cellars, which is a, a very chill bar, as it's the wine bar on board, uh, Michael Mondavi wine bar. Uh, I love this table. Yeah, lots and lots of wine. Uh, we are drinking some sparkling wine by the glass, it was covered by the beverage package. They do have a wine tasting glass. Yeah, a bunch of them. And like, then wine and cheese, and I think wine and chocolate as well. But uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. By most of the elevators on the public decks, you'll find these tap points, which is where you could book all of your entertainment, and you could also book your shore excursions or tender tickets on here. So definitely try and do that quickly once you get on board, because things do fill up, especially the comedy. We're currently at deck 16 in the front of the ship. Unlike most cruise lines, the buffet on this ship is in the front, and that is the Garden Cafe. One thing I do like about this buffet, they have signs advertising what they're doing for dinner every night. So to get people to come back, to the day, one night was prime rib, one night was turkey, one night was steak and trip, and tonight is oriental night, which looks like Peking duck. But we are at, on a port day, and we're gonna show you what lunch looks like. The first section of the buffet you get to is a bread course, sliced multi-grain bread, sliced baguette, rye rolls. And my favorite. Oh yes, the spiced cheese rolls. So good. Um, those are good, they also do pretzel bread in most evenings, and that's really, really good. You've got Chinese hot and sour soup, beef consomme, and really, really nice croutons. 
Very important, there is a full service bar in the buffet area that'll run pretty much all hours that the buffet is open. And you get full liquor drinks in here as well as beer, wine, and uh, fruit juices. There are lots of different sections of the buffet, but you will find a uh, couple of these soft serve ice cream machines. Let's see what we got over here. A lamb stew with root vegetables. These look good. Loaded potatoes. Those look really good. Some of this stuff is here pretty much every single meal. Like I think mac and cheese and fish fingers have been here every meal. It wouldn't be a buffet without pizza. And today there's a vegetable pizza. There's always a cheese pizza. And then today's pizza of the day, the weird one, is jerk chicken and pineapple. Pizza. That's very odd. For most days for lunch, there's always like a, a salad station where they'll toss up the salad for you. Today it is a Cobb salad. It's been a Caesar salad in other days. Moving along, you get hummus and pita bread. That's a good snack. That is. Oh man, some of the stuff is weird. Hawaiian cabbage salad. Fatouche, I don't know what that is. A really fun name. Tropical bean salad. Rice stuffed wine leaves. Some interesting stuff today. This section of the buffet is the same for every single lunch and dinner. Yeah, it never changes. Yep. You do get hot dogs, chili, fajita spice, sauerkraut, pulled pork, grilled cheese. There is a burger of the day. That would change every day. Today is pulled pork and Swiss cheese, hamburgers, rolls for hamburgers, french fries, coleslaw, show me potato salad, some lettuce, and some of the various toppings you would put on the burgers. I think this is pretty nice. They have a wide variety of sauces. So yeah, you never see this on a cruise line. No, it's pretty nice. Like a lots of different options. You have a more traditional salad station. The breadsticks. I'm not a salad guy, but those breadsticks are tasty. And then there's also a lot of different drink stations. Uh, these would be complimentary and run anytime the buffet is open. You get coffees, milk, as well as juices and lemonade, iced tea, strawberry kiwi water. There was also a separate upcharge beverage station where they could do a pour your own wine, not included with the beverage packages though. And there's also a machine that will sell you Starbucks coffee. That feels like you're living in the future. Got more hot food items here. Lamb stew with root vegetables, creamy spinach, soy ginger chicken with shiitake mushrooms, and then a black beans and sweet potato chili. Steamed vegetables, that's something I am definitely gonna get. Chicken Parmesan piccata. Ooh, tostones with volcano chili. Another set of fish fingers. And then we got some more mac and cheese, chicken tenders, a couple different types of pasta. I do love me some chicken fingers. You've got two different types of bean salad. And then let's see, we've got a pulled pork panini today, and then a knockwurst. Now this buffet, speaking my language, pretzel pizzas. It looks like one with ham and pineapple, and then one with cheese. There's a uh, dessert to get behind glass, and they're all individual sized portions, like the white chocolate raspberry mousse, uh, the soccer tort, the famous Vienna dessert. Yeah. White chocolate cream caramel looks like a flan. Key lime pie bar, and then some fruits and no sugar added vanilla cheesecake. And then over here we've got carrot cake. cake. Adorable. Now if you don't want uh, pizza pretzels, they have just normal pretzels as well, along with a selection of meats and cheeses. A selection of cold sandwiches. Interesting stuff, tuna salad. And then look at this guy here. That is a ham potato bun salad sandwich. That bun looks good. The next section on the plate is wok. Home to steamed rice. Ooh, a bunch of different vegetables. You got some Singapore fried rice. And then, this looks good for me, stir fried pork with cabbage. Yeah. You've also got shrimp crackers. And there's always gonna be a station for lunch for a different type of noodle soup. Today it's miso soup or vegetable soup, and you get your kind of broth, and all these things you can put in your broth. Personally, not really my thing, but I like fried onions on my cheeseburgers or hot dogs. I believe every day for lunch and dinner, there's also a Taste of India section, starting with the cold side, 
which is things like mango chutney, pickles, and moving on to the hot side, coconut rice, chicken shindandu. The chicken tikka looks really good. Non bread. Who doesn't love non bread? Ooh, I love non bread. Yeah. Uh, we've got some dal, kurma, halu, basmati rice, and then something called palak pakora. On deck seven in the middle of the ship is where you'll find the casino on board, and it is a pretty big casino. Starting off over here, you got the Skyline Bar, which I always like bars like this, where you could sit at the bar, have a drink, and play video poker. And look at the screen. Yeah, they have um, some pretty big screens. It was kind of cool. We sat in some of these chairs the other day and watched the NBA on the big screen. Mm -hmm. Now, since it is a cruise ship, they don't get all the uh, the normal channels. As it's right now, we're filming this on January sixth, and they are playing ski jumping here at around right around noon. <laughs> Let's take a walk through the casino. Lots and lots of slot machines. You do have your coin pusher game over here. Now, one thing about this casino, it is pretty much a no smoking casino. There is, in this area here, it's kind of like smoking jail. Mm -hmm. And we've seen this a couple times here on the Norwegian Encore, where you can only smoke in certain areas. Now, as somebody that doesn't smoke, I'm all for this. If I was a smoker, I'm not sure how much I would like it. But the casino goes on for quite some time. So you can see here, lots of really fun looking slot machines. Big giant new. Yeah, I will say, um, well, it's gonna vary sailing to sailing. On our sailing, the casino has been very, very popular. Yes, especially the table games. Yep. And as we get towards like the secondary atrium where you get this wonderful chandelier, which does change color at different times of the day. This is where you do get your table games along with the player's club desk and the cashier. Now, if you are a, a, a table games person, the table games offered here on the Encore are three card poker, blackjack, craps, pie gal, baccarat, Mississippi stud, ultimate Texas hold'em, and roulette. And they do vary in prices. Yes, so um, like a lot of the blackjacks, I find some with like a $10 minimum, and, but then I've seen some with like a $50 minimum, and those tables have been full. Yes. Oh. Which I was, I was surprised by that when I saw that. There is a high roller room over here. And we're getting towards the end of the casino, but I did want to show off a couple of these machines. These are kind of some that have popped up rather newer, where there's uh, video versions of much more table games. So you can play blackjack or craps. And there we go, that is the casino. On deck 15 in the front of the ship, you'll find the, the biggest lounge on board, and that is the observation lounge. Uh, filled with comfy, comfy seating. And I, I like this, it's one of my favorite spots on the cruise ship. Uh, they do serve some food in here. There'll be some like mini spur buffets. They'll do a light breakfast every day Hello. between 9 and 11.30. And then there'll be tea time snacks served between 3 and 5. Uh, the tea time snacks are interesting. They're kind of like upscale a little bit. You can find there's three different mini buffets that they'll be, the food will be served at. I'm trying to get to the tea time every day because some of the stuff in there is very, very good. Also, they have a later breakfast in here. The buffet breakfast was that. 10.30, well this one runs until 11. Yeah. And, uh, the only white offering so. Yeah, so like you had like croissants and... Yeah, I made myself a croissant sandwich with ham and cheese. You can't, you can't. And then they had Danishes. It was really good. Yeah, I do love some of these big loungers they have in here. Uh, excellent place to just sit down and enjoy the views. Like that other cruise ship over there. Yeah, look at that. And as you can see, this lounge is very, very big. And this is only half of it. There's another one, half on this on the other side, and then a big area up front. Uh, some evenings, there will be some entertainment in here. Normally, it's like a very chill kind of piano music. Mm -hmm. They haven't had any really events in here besides the piano. Play. Which I feel like makes sense. I think you need a quiet lounge on a cruise ship, mm -hmm. and especially ones with the scenic views. And it wouldn't be a lounge without a bar. They do have a, a bar. It runs just kind of the standard bar menu. Mm -hmm. And we now made it to the very front of the ship. I'm gonna sneak this way and make my way towards the observation, -y, the most observation -y part of the observation lounge. More uh, area for food. Yes. And snack and breakfast time. Yes, we'll be back at three. Mm -hmm. You can see the piano. And the other half of the lounge that I was talking about, it's just the, kind of the same thing over on that side. 
we head up here to walk past the piano. And you get the big reveal of like the floor to ceiling windows. You can also see this from the... The buffet. The buffet, yes. Yeah, there's buffet seating right there. Those people are probably enjoying a cheeseburger. But these seats are very, very comfortable. Yes, those these lounges. Gorgeous views for sailing in and out of the port or in Alaska for mm -hmm. This is the place to be see lots of cruise ships on the horizon today. There's one over there. And then two way, way, way in front of us. We have the super zoom to the fullest. Yeah, that's those Royal Caribbean ships with like the big thing of the observation ride. I can't see. I had the super zoom on. <laughs> that's the only way I could see that. All right, and that's the observation lounge. Really, really chill spot. Get it just off the waterfront, you'll find the bake shop. This tends to run from about noon till five every single day on the ship. And it's gonna be an upcharged bakery. There's also a gelato stand attached. They sell bonbons in here. Some very fancy looking cupcakes. Now, while these are upcharged items, they're not much. The cupcakes are two to three dollars. Oh man, look at that chocolate fudge cupcake. I think the macarons look really good. Yes, and uh, two dollars for macarons. And macarons are really expensive, so that's actually not bad at all. And on the side facing the waterfront, there is a gelato stand. About two seventy-five for a scoop of gelato. Right now, we are on deck five, which is where all the kids' clubs are located. You got the Entourage Teen Club. We've also got the Splash Academy for the little ones, and this is also where the video arcade will be located. Now, this video arcade, don't get it confused with the Galaxy Pavilion. That is your uh, your higher price VR stuff. This is more of your traditional. Dave and Buster's type arcade. And let's see what all kinds of fun we got in here. You could win ducks, guitar hero, souvenir squash pennies. It's a pretty good size arcade. You can win the high value prizes, including like uh, three or four GoPros ago. I do like that they have the, the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory coin pusher games. Those are super duper fun. There's Stacker Monster. Now, if you win prizes, you don't go to a person to redeem them, but this giant machine. This is the biggest machine I think I've seen on any cruise ship for redeeming prizes. Machine. All right, let's take a look around the rest of the arcade. We've got the Guitar Hero. You've got a couple of VR style attractions. One that features dinosaurs by the folks at Smash and one by LAI Games that is the Raving Rabbits. We got Halo Fire Team Raven, House of the Dead, some racing games, Dead Storm Pirates, Injustice Arcade. Uh, you can't have an arcade without ski ball. Papa Shot Basketball. Deal or no deal? Definitely not the biggest arcade you'll find on a cruise ship. They do pack a lot of games in here, though. Look at this, this is a game I don't think I've ever seen before in arcade. Something called River of Riches. That looks super fun. And a couple of crane machines as well. Now these things all do cost money, so just be aware of that. Like if you wanted to play the Jurassic Escape Arcade VR thing, it is $7. The big deal here on the Norwegian Encore is specialty dining. Now there's lots of restaurants like this one that's gonna cost extra and is not included with the cost of your cruise. And we're going to show off all of them, starting here with the one we're dining at tonight, which is Onda by Scarpetta, which is the Italian restaurant on board, and it's located on deck eight. Here is the dining room at Onda, a very small dining room, but also very modern and very sleek. We sat down at our table. There's a lovely bread course, three types of bread and three types of dips. And now let's take a look at the menu. Now we are using our dining credit. A lot of times if you book on Norwegian and you book the free at sea, you get one specialty dining restaurant. And on this one, you can get two appetizers and one entree and one side. And your appetizers can be either the pizza or any of the antipasts or an appetizer sized portion of pasta. And then you get one main, which could either be the pasta or the secondy. And then you get one side. This is gonna be a ton of food and I am excited for it. The bread course is absolutely delicious, especially this calzone type bread. And then Molly and I both got the specially old fashioned they serve here, which has Woodford Reserve and then a vanilla bean simple syrup. The first appetizer course has arrived, and Molly got a market salad, and I got the beef carpaccio. 
And our second course has arrived. I got the uh, the beef patatella pasta and Molly the short rib ravioli. You can tell it's a fancy restaurant as look at the knife they gave me for my steak. The main course has arrived and it looks pretty fantastic. I got the filet mignon with a side of the fingerling potatoes and Molly got the veal. As big as my head. Yeah, that is quite the portion along with the mushrooms. I, it definitely reminds me of like the uh, like the sandwiches you get, like a, like a pork tenderloin sandwich where the, it's way bigger than the bun. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll probably be pretty full after this, but they look fantastic. And it's not over yet. We've got the dessert menu. They do have five different desserts. I'm already pretty full, so this is gonna be a tough call. And if there's any room, it's now currently time for dessert. Molly got the cheesecake. And I got their signature, the butterscotch bandito. And that'll do it for Onda. I really enjoyed our meal. I think we got good, a uh, really, really nice meal out of our specialty dining credit. The pasta was really good. And the dessert, my dessert, this, this butterscotch thing was delicious. I will say though, if we were paying out of pocket, if we didn't have a beverage plan or a specialty dining uh, credit, this meal would have been about $300. And I loved it. Not a $300 meal. If you're using a dining credit like we were, fantastic meal. Pasta. Sitting on deck six, right by the chocolate shop and the nightclub, is Teppanyaki, which is another upcharge restaurant. This is one of the experiences where the chef will cook right in front of you on a big flat top. This one's massive compared to most on the ship. Yeah, this is the biggest Teppanyaki restaurant I've ever seen on a cruise ship. Now, the Teppanyaki is also the only of the upcharge restaurants that is a flat cost. I believe it's $59 a person. Getting on deck eight towards the front of the ship, you'll find Food Republic, which is a specialty restaurant. This is an Asian fusion restaurant. You order via tablets. And it's one of the few specialty restaurants that also operates for lunch. So this will be open for lunch on your sea days. Pretty uh, snazzy looking restaurant. Yeah, very modern. Yeah. You can see the big sushi bar over there. Great, great views from the tables. You can see everyone has an iPad. That's how you order your food. Getting on deck 17 towards the back of the ship is Le Bistro, which is the upcharge French restaurant. Very nice looking dining room they have. Located on deck eight is Ocean Blue, the upcharge seafood restaurant. You can get cold water lobster, fish and chips, seafood linguine, filet mignon, surf and turf. I am, I'm not a seafood guy. Every so. time we passed it, we were eating outside, it looked really good. Yeah. And again, like most of the specialty dining restaurants, a very, very nice room. I love the lights, look at those. Mm -hmm. On deck six towards the front of the ship, you'll find Q, which is the upcharge barbecue restaurant. This is uh, one of the larger barbecue, uh, one of the larger specialty restaurants on the ship. It is, uh, during the day, sometimes they'll use it for other things in here as well, because it is a pretty big space. There was arts and crafts in here yesterday. Uh, if you're a, a silver member or above with Latitudes, this is where the welcome back party was. And it's a cool space. I believe on some cruise ships, or on, sometimes on the Encore, they'll have a country music band playing in here. Unfortunately, they did not have one on our cruise. And then the bar, I believe, after a certain time, is open for anyone. You don't need reservations. Yeah, when they're doing the entertainment, mm -hmm. which unfortunately on our cruise, they are not. But uh, man, this is a big restaurant. I like the, uh, the neon signs as well. On deck 17 in the back of the ship, you'll find another upcharge restaurant. This one, I believe, is all pretty much outdoors open air seating. And that is the American Diner. I love that it's car themed and the car boots. That's pretty, pretty cool looking. Look at very that. It's definitely very busy. Feels like the uh, the sci-fi drive-in at uh, Disney Hollywood Studios. Mm -hmm. Now this is going to be a much uh, less expensive upcharge restaurant. Lots of burgers and hot dogs. In the very back of Deck 8, you'll find three different things. They're all connected. The Alice Bar in the middle is sort of the pre-dinner bar for two specialty dining restaurants. Yes. On as we're walking this way, on the right side would be Cagney's Steakhouse, uh, something we've eaten at on multiple Norwegian ships. Quite enjoy it. A very, very good steakhouse. Um, something if you're, you're trying to figure out where to use that dining credit, 
That is normally my number one choice. It probably fills up one of the fastest restaurants. Yeah, that and the teppanyaki. And then on the left is something that is not on as many Norwegian ships, and that is Los Lobos, which is their upcharge Mexican restaurant. Look very tempting on the menu. Yes. You just normally don't think of like, where well, you're trying to get your bang for your buck out of that, that dining pass, and like, oh, you know, Mexican food's not normally as expensive as, say, a steakhouse or fancy Italian. On deck 17, in the front of the ship, where you'll find the Haven. Now, this is the area for suites on the cruise ship. Yes. Uh, suite guests also get their own lounge and pool and restaurant. We're staying on an inside cabin. We're not we paying for that. Can't go there. Can't go there. On deck 19, in the front of the ship, is the Vibe Beach Club. Now, this is an upcharge sunbed area. There's also going to be uh, hot tubs in there. Now, it is an upcharge, and it's quite a bit of an upcharge as well. I believe on our sailing, it was around like two to three hundred dollars a person to buy the pass. So we are not paying for the Vibe Beach Club or the Haven, but thanks to this giant model of the ship, here's an idea of what that looks like. The ship model is in the observation lounge, and it is like the biggest model of a cruise ship I think I've ever seen. We are currently on deck eight, where about half the deck is shopping. It's gonna be where all the shops are on the cruise ship, from jewelry to watches, to Norwegian Encore souvenirs. Yes, I find like, it interesting. The souvenirs isn't in its own shop, it's in the hallway. Yeah. You get the big uh, model of the cruise ship for, I believe, $60. Unfortunately, when they're on this ship, they did not have any cruise ship ornaments. No, no. It's like the one thing we always That's buy. That's what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. More Norwegian Encore stuff. I like the, uh, the cruise ship stress ball. That's fun. Uh, tiny spirit jerseys. Yep. There's a sale going on right now for some $10 fashion. Yes. I always think the water bottles are nice. Those are nice. Norwegian Encore hats, lanyards, deck of cards. Ooh, the Tervis tumblers are very nice. Look mm -hmm. at those. Coffee mugs. Mm -hmm. And then uh, polo shirts. Very nice. Yeah. I do like this. There's a clip and drink right here, which you can clip to like the edge of a pool and it would hold your beverage. It's reversible so it'll hold like all different types of cocktails. I have not seen that before. I think that's really neat. Yeah, like cans and stuff. Yeah. If you're a spirit jersey person, they do have a couple different versions of the Noreen Encore spirit jersey. Uh, the pint glasses. Very nice. Koozies. Yep. Look at the sweatpants. Oh, look at that. More hats. Yeah, there's definitely no shortage of um, merchandise. You will have a table here where they'll sell different things on different days. Right now it's watches. There was a, a, a liquor tasting here at one point. Mm -hmm. There's a whole section for the photo gallery. So if you took any of the pictures on board the ship, you could buy them over there. Stores I would not spend a lot of time in is the super fancy jewelry store. There's also perfumes. Mm -hmm. And then you have your outfits, like uh, more outerwear that's not Norwegian themed. Yep, it's just if you wanted to go shopping and get you some clothes or you forgot some clothes on the ship. Purses, hats. Uh huh. Um, this is also where the duty free liquor store is on board. I didn't think the, the prices were too great at the duty free liquor store when we looked at them. Uh, we did stop in Jamaica and we got like three bottles of booze, for, no, four bottles of booze for like $35. That was a really good deal. I do love the coach bag. Which coach bag? The, the back. Oh, the one with the hedgehog on it? Yeah. Yep, that's that's wonderful. I don't need a backpacker. I would consider looking at the price. Yeah, I mean, it, it does have hedgehog on it. See, so the luggage over here is pretty neat as well. That's not bad, like 15 bucks. And there we go. Those are the shops on board. Yes. Located just off the atrium is the library and card room. And uh, they got a bunch of books you can rent out, just like if you were in a library. One book they don't have, Molly. That's right, Experience the Point Volume 3, written by our own Andrew Hyde, autographed by the author. So uh, we're just going to leave it here. And now you can enjoy Hyde's work. Real quick, finishing things up, here's our room. We're in 14421, which was an inside cabin. Uh, big bed, big comfy bed, lots of lights, but it did get very dark. It did. Super duper dark. One thing I did like, there were USB plugs above the bed. Not a ton of storage in here for a ship that does a lot of longer cruises. Yeah. You really only had this one closet. With like two shelves. Yeah. 
Um, you did have like four movie channels. Spider-Man's on right now. In a small desk or vanity area. And then the bathroom. I did get nice and cold in here as well. Uh, the cabins, to use the do not disturb sign or the makeup room, they are all digital. You do have to put some sort of a card in there to make power go on in the room. Don't use your room key, just if you have some sort of like extra card in your wallet, like I use an in a little business card, use that. And the bathroom, uh, shower's pretty nice. I'm a big fan of whenever they have the uh, glass doors and a cruise ship instead of the curtain. And yeah, the, the bathroom is completely serviceable, including the terrifying flushing sound. Horrifying. And that will do it for our time on board the Norwegian Encore. I had a really fun time on this cruise. Some pricing on our five night cruise, the cabin cost per person was I think around $289. We did book on board another Norwegian ship, so we saved some money there. Molly, uh, let's talk about the goods and the bads of the Norwegian Encore. What were some of your favorite parts? Uh, the waterfront. I love that Sa uh, Salen's stain bar and how they had a different drink every single day. And lots of seating out there. So many couches and things to just hang out and watch the ocean. I had a lot of fun at the deck parties. The, uh, the 80s party was a blast and the glow party was fun until about a half an hour in and started to rain. Oops. <laughs> the buffet. I really love the food on the buffet. Yeah, it was I, massive and had a lot of selections. And while it got busy, it was never too chaotic in there. I also like how they would advertise what's for dinner to sort of make you go back to the buffet. Like, oh man, it's prime rib night. Got to go back to the buffet. Uh, the bars, the uh, the uh, whiskey bar in the brew house. Yeah, those are definitely my two favorite bars. I, I loved hanging out in the brew house, either having my nice little whiskey cocktails that I enjoy or going down the line of all the different beers and playing mini beer pong, watching sports, listening to music. And then I love the old fashioned at the Maltings bar. Mm -hmm. uh, the Beatles band was also really good in the cavern. Yeah. They sounded just like the Beatles. Yep. Uh, also good entertainment. The comedians, we saw both of them and they were both very good, I thought. And the silent disco was very unique of how it was Bluetooth and you had to walk around. And yeah. Instead of changing the channel, like pushing a button, you had to go to four different quadrants to go to either the 80s, the 90s, 2000s or today. And that I thought was really neat. Um, there's a good variety of entertainment from game shows to cooking demonstrations, deck parties, music. So I thought they did a pretty good job with that. My ravioli. At the Specialty Restaurant. Yeah, the Specialty Restaurant was quite the treat. While I would have never paid that kind of money they charged for it to go there with your dining package, that was a, that was pretty good. Oh, it was so good. Uh, cruise Next is a, always a good deal on Norwegian ships. I booked another one. I'll be on another Norwegian ship next week. And uh, we booked this one while on board a different Norwegian ship. I think the way they do it, where you kind of buy discounted gift cards more or less, is very smart. Yes, uh, the crew members were also very, very like, friendly. They knew our names. Very attentive. Yeah, there's some cruise lines where I go on, I, 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 leaving the ship, I couldn't tell you any crew member's name. This one, I could have told you a whole bunch. Yes. Um, oh, I also like the, uh, we watched a movie in the atrium, and they give out free popcorn. That, that's just fantastic. Uh, the bar menu since the last Norwegian ship we've been on have added the Amarula cream liqueur, which that's a nice after dinner treat, and that's included with the beverage package. One of the most unique thing, and we've only seen it on Princess Cruise Line, one ship on Princess Cruise Line, was the movie sketch comedy show. That was a blast. Where the activities uh, crew drew, acts out 20 different scenes of 20 different movies, and it's hilarious. Don't miss it. No, speaking of things you should not miss, I think by far my favorite part of this entire cruise ship was the Choir of Man production show. It was really good. Oh my gosh, one of, one of my the best shows I've ever seen out of, I think, the 54 cruises we've been on, this is definitely in the top five, I would say. It really, absolutely fantastic. Now, with the good, do comes the bad. And there's quite a few things I think feel like you and I did not enjoy so much yeah. on the Norwegian Encore. And that, for me, starting up is the one thing that's most obvious when you walk around the ship. There's lots of upcharges everywhere, and it feels like you're getting nickel and dimed. Yeah, the uh, speed track, the laser tag. Go-karts. go, -karts, go -karts. Arcade, the other arcade. For some reason, we have two different chocolate areas. It's just like, it's so many specialty upcharge restaurants. And then parts of the ship, too, are like, oh, you're not in the haven. You can't go here. 
Oh, you're, you don't, you didn't buy a Vibe Beach Club pass. You can't go here. Too bad. Enjoy the four hot tubs that are crowded at all times and good luck getting a lawn chair. There was about two and a half to three hours where I was only upcharged stuff of activities. There was either beer tasting, wine tasting. You had your bingos and deal or no deal and no other activities on the ship besides those ep sale activities too. Yeah, which I'm, I'm sure is important of how they make money, but as a guest, it kind of, it doesn't make you feel great. Yeah, you want one free thing during that time, I feel like. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves was the elevators. There was always crowded elevators. You had to wait for elevators. Uh, it was a giant ship and you needed those elevators. I mean, going from the atrium to the buffet is 10 floors. Now you could walk, but that is, I'd be gassed by the time I got to. <laughs> a downstairs, maybe. Yeah. Upstairs, no way for me. <laughs> Uh, one thing I found weird, they don't turn the splash pad off during the deck parties, so you're over there dancing, and the tipping bucket is still going at like 11 p.m. at night, and they, they, they preach all this sail and sustain stuff, and like, I don't know, guys. <laughs> that was weird. Um, on the sea day, all the deck chairs, even on not by the pool, all deck chairs were gone by 10.30 in the morning. Yes. Uh, even on the sun decks that were far away from the pools, they were all taken. Yeah, we were on a very full ceiling, and there was entertainment on, venues on the ship that just had nothing in them. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, there was never a musician in the queue. Very, very rarely was there somebody in the observation lounge. So in a, a full ship, when they should be, like, running full bore with things to do, they had entertainment options go empty, and I did not like that. Speaking of entertainment, limited entertainment after 11 p.m. Yep, Most musicians stopped at 11. You had no entertainment after 11. They didn't even play movies after 11 like mm -hmm. some of the ships do. So pretty much you could go to the casino, you could go to bed, or you could go to the nightclub, and that's it. Uh, the piano bar. Piano bar was, was still about midnight. 45, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and one thing I don't like is it just doesn't make me feel vacation-y. As soon as you get on board the Encore, you've got to make your show reservations and your comedy reservations right away. There is a standby line. You might get in for that. You might not. But all the comedy was gone by 1 p.m. on embarkation day. Yeah. People have, some people haven't even got on the ship yet. Yeah. Some people are still at work at 1 p.m. Um, one of my pet peeves, uh, during sea day, it said that this bar was open and it was closed for private events. And there was multiple venues advertised that they were open, but they were closed on private events. And I understand private events make money. But you just o operate, just, you update the errors as they should be. Correct. So there we go. Uh, we like to be honest here, and those were some of the, the ups and the downs of the Norwegian Encore. Overall, five-day cruise. I had a really fun time. I uh, would love to go back. The ravioli. <laughs> <laughs> Molly might dream of that ravioli. All right, if you have any questions about the Encore, let us know in the comments section below. And thank you so much for watching this video. You guys didn't watch videos like this. We couldn't go on this many cruise ships. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'll see you next time.